For sure. Uh, so, what do you say? Where sh- should we should we start it off? If if uh, you've piqued my interest with that 911, so okay, uh, take it away. So the 911. So if anyone's a big fan of race cars, which I am a massive fan of race cars, I'm a big fan of racing, and I'm a big fan of Porsches, uh, Audis, Volkswagens in particular, because that's just the group of cars that I. I'm a, I'm a little bit more studied on. Actually, that's not true. Also, Dodgers. I do like uh, uh, quite a bit of Dodgers. So here's the here's the first thing to come up, right? And this is just to show you where this all starts. And if you want to follow along in, I guess, the annals of Porsche history, Porsche actually, and I would say arguably, introduced what I would say is the first supercar, along with the same year and a different genre, was the Ferrari F40. Both taking two totally different and independent I would say, approaches to the supercar format. So ironically, this is the Porsche 959, which came out in the latter part of the 1980s. And it was a completely different animal from what anyone had ever seen before in the marketplace for supercars. That being said, it was an all-wheel drive, two turbos, uh, still the intercooled flat, double overhead cam six, making over 440 horsepower. 369 pound-feet of torque with a six-speed manual <clears throat> transmission. However, this thing is still a rocket, even by supercar standards, doing 0 to 16 in 3.6, 0 to 100 in 8.8, and 130 miles an hour in 15.9 seconds. Still, I, I would say arguably decent, and, and I would say decent specs for, for today's day and age. What would you say? Yeah, 959, exactly. I mean, those are those are quite decent. I mean, you had sub sub four seconds, zero sixty. Yeah. So you're not you're not nothing to laugh about. Um, as technology gets better and better, a mm-hmm. lot of modern day, even I don't want to say minivans too, but everything gets faster and more reliable. But but no, this is not a slow vehicle anyway. So no. yeah, no. It's, and it was gorgeous. It would be fun. Okay, this was yeah. this was a pretty car, and it's still by today's standards, I would say it's got clean lines. It has all the objective looks of a supercar exotic, and it is really a fantastic piece of machinery. And I think now on the open market, they're going in, I think, I think the million category, I think, is one that just went through. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, um, but it is really cool. Looking. And I, I like even the design is very nice, even though it's obviously a bit dated, but it's it looks fine. Looks good. And ironically, now. This was a manual transmission car, although at the time it still had active suspension. It had some components of active aerodynamics. It had limited slip differentials. And in in the annals of what it was predicting for the future, this was a smash in the ideals of that Ferrari was, I mean, not Ferrari. Porsche was really looking at something from a completely different concept of how this the future of supercars should look, seeing as they were just designing their own category for it. And with that, they decided to take it racing. And there was a two-step process to this when they were thinking about what they were going to do with this car. Ironically, when the car was designed, they had in mind that they were going to take it for rally racing, going into the World uh, world Rally, and go into Group B. But they would put themselves up against their own better creation at that time, which would have been the Audi Quattro. So they decided instead to convert this car to go someplace else, which they thought had open appeal. And that was Paris to Dakar. So they decided to take three prototypes the car. for the first time that they sent these cars out here. And what they did was they finished first, second, and third. They came back the very <laughs> next year, made mechanical differences just to make sure that they could make it into the 200 category of the cars that they had to produce in order to be qualified for the series, and none of them finished. They came back the next year with actual 959s that were redesigned slightly to compete in the parity car, and guess what? First, second, and fifth, and the only reason why the car that finished in fifth finished in fifth was because uh, it acted as the spare parts car to bring them tires when they got flats. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> and as you can see, the car rode a little bit higher. It was a pretty car. It was still arguably, I think, just as pretty today. And now there's the reimagined version of what we're about to take a look at. Still, I, oh, I, yeah. st- I still think it was a gorgeous car. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we went from the 959 as it is today. And this is everything reimagined, folks. We went to the 959 for the Dakar. And this is the Singer ACS. This is, I I guess it's, there's a gentleman out there, Richard Tuttle. Tuthill, not Tuttle from uh, Orange County (laughs) Chopper, right? He decided (laughs) that that he was going to, not that guy. (laughs) He decided that he was going to take this and he commissioned Singer of all people, who is world famous for taking their 911s and doing redesigns for them, and he pushed it to the next level. And when I pushed, and I say pushed, okay, in in the design factors of what he really wanted to see, 
We're going to take a, a short view here of, of this clip, and it is phenomenal. I'm just going to shut the hell up because I'm going to say this is... Roll that footage. Yeah, it's like two minutes and 55 seconds of absolute and yeah, total yeah, yeah. beauty. It's really cool. Check it out. Do we know if that's Richard? That is. I believe it is. Just out for a stroll. Going to get some milk. And the production value on this is fantastic. Jim Connor there. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. They did some pretty good uh, shots with this too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know we're looking at the car and our performance and, and you know its, its presence and all that, obviously, but the video itself is pretty good. And it's not slow. <laughs> That's one thing I never did when I went racing. I never did any off-road stuff. Makes me want to. I agree. I think it'd be fun. In my dreams, that's where I, I go. Was gonna, I was just going to say, <laughs> every time you hit a beach, isn't it like, oh, I could so drive my car out here or my truck out here. How oh, fun would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Of course. So what's your thoughts on that bad boy right there? It's pretty awesome. I would have to it's say. pretty awesome. Like I said, I mean, the, the driving looks tons of fun. Uh, like I said, uh, things that I'd like to try, just rally cross and anything. But uh, but obviously the car looks really good. It looks like it's it's timeless. It adds a bit of that timelessness. I would say. As Porsche tends to do. Oh, yeah. Usually. And... Um, and it was filmed really well, the, the video, I think. And one thing I liked, which sometimes happens, and actually it's why I didn't want to talk too much of the video, is you see these videos sometimes people post and it's a, it's a cool, serene or some or a race or something about how car, how nice this car sounds. And then there's music over the whole video. Yeah, it's like, no, no, this was just pure It's like, please, beauty. please no music. <laughs> so please, right? So no music for that. So here's the best part, okay? When, when you're going to pay homage to the proper car, and this is what you want to show, the Singer ACS, the 9, 911 Rally, this version, the 1990 chassis is what it started out as. Rear engine, four-wheel drive, two-door coupe, same thing, okay? The what? price is still not, that's not the right price. But anyhow, still a 3.6-liter twin-turbo intercooled flat, double oven cam, six, Horsepower, 450 torque 420, which is up marketably, but a five-speed sequen sequential box and <clears> still a curb weight of about, uh, they're saying, 3,500 pounds. Now, this is the car in its infinite beauty without all the dirt and everything else, and I just think it's absolutely stellarly gorgeous. There's, there's, I've never seen anything, I think, in, in modern era cars where it's managed to capture that rally look, that aesthetic of modernness, because if you look at like details like this front bumper... It looks completely modern. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you look at the rear end, they're it does. Yeah. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And they effectively, I think they did a fantastic job with the fender flares, incorporating the bigger tires, giving it the suspension travel that it needs, and even the yeah, detail yeah. work around the trans the uh the back end by the exhaust. I, phenomenal. Um I, I really, really, really can't even 
I would. What would you do for this car? <laughs> what would I do? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, what would I do to have? Oh, yeah. I don't know. You know, looking at the rear end of that car just a moment ago, mm-hmm. it kind of reminds me. And actually, in a way, the whole kind of car, it kind of reminds me of something I'd see at a cyberpunk. Yes. And, and I don't say that in a negative way. No, no, I'm no. I'm saying that in a way that it's, again, timeless. It's been updated. Something that was from the past, but has updates and new new touches but it's still the bare bones of what it used to be. And it's really good. And I, it's done well. So really, really well. And I think one of the things that I think is even more amazing, and now it gives me ideas for what I'm going to do to finish off my sim rig is that the actual dashboard, the entire configuration of the cabin is I think phenomenal. They, they didn't overlook any details where they just took things and slopped them together. They put everything and it's got this kind of iPhone esque touch treatment to it. I would, I would venture to say, it's really, really beautiful. Class act. Well done. And Singer, look, they don't mess around. These guys, are they're no joke. They know what they're doing when it comes to these cars. But just to see this thing do what it does and perform and almost be a, a moving piece of art, to me, phenomenal work. I, I, couldn't be, I couldn't be more happy with the way that that car turned out for them. And congratulations to them for all the hard work, and especially Richard for commissioning it, because that's ultimately going to be his, uh, his ride. And I think it might be going... Back to rallying. Really? We're, we're, well, he, what, uh, where'd you see that? Or what was that? That was in the press release that they had. And then ironically, when I went to the singer website to actually look at more of the press release information, it was, uh, they had an error. There was a 404 error. So they must be taking something down to edit it. But, uh, interesting. Check I thought it, it was gorgeous. Any more, any, you have anything else to add on it? No, I'm just checking out a little more info, you know, as we get to as we talk about this stuff. I'm just looking it up. It looks like this gentleman maybe owns a Porsche dealership somewhere. Someplace, yes. Richard? Yes. He's done this maybe? before. He's, he's, sent, he's had cars mm-hmm. commissioned for them before to do this. And uh, I think he's got two okay. road-going versions of 911s that they do as their basic. But this one is just... When, you, when, you, when I think about, like, I don't know, Dirt Rally or a racing video game, and I think about what I, what objectively yeah. would be the car that I could almost own. Obviously, I can't own this one, and I can't own a daily race car or a rally car, nor yeah. do I have the skill to actually build one. However, if I knew that, you know, a quarter million dollars, and that was a goal to earn to, to buy one of these and be able to go thrash it around, um, I still don't think I'd go thrash it around because I don't have the driving, quite that driving skill yet. I'd be afraid to get it dirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it'd be so nice to have. God, it's beautiful. Beautiful car. To go have fun with, yeah. I think yeah. that is now on the top 10 of my list of all-time cars in, in my desire category. This would probably be it. To find a nice uh, a nice Porsche you could fix up and... No, this one. I would, I would literally, if I... It, You're like, this one in particular. Money was no object. I would call a singer tomorrow yeah. and be like... I want one of those and, you know, I want it in, and they have another one that's out there in burnt orange, burnt orange metallic okay. uh, that, that okay. I think they, someone else commissioned as well. And I would be like, hey, what, what's the dollar amount? I'd, done. Send it. Send it to me. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Nice. But yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be super cool, man. Sure. Super cool. So that's all I got on that one. Hey, folks, if you like the content, and now you know we're just we're scamming off of other people's work here because look, we didn't make this damn thing. But the part of it is, is that I want to know your thoughts and feelings on it. So if you think this is one of the top ten cars in the world right now and one of the most desirable, let us know in the comments below. And also like, subscribe, and follow. And we'd appreciate all the uh, all the effort that you guys put into following us. That'd be great. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. So great. Thank Moving you. onwards.